Okay, we're gonna do that one more time. Fantastic, let's go. All right, let's talk about Wes Anderson. Here's his story. Grew up in Houston, Texas. His old man was an ad exec. His mama was an archaeologist. Well, how about his education? Wes went to private school, actually spent a lot of time producing plays and making Super 8 movies. And from there, he went to the University of Texas, where he studied philosophy. But get this, who do you think Wes's roommate was in university? Well, it was a kid by the name of Owen Wilson, and together they wrote their first script, the instant cult classic and the awesome Bottle Rocket. Bobby, what for you? Next up, Anderson had his biggest hit. It was called Rushmore, which incidentally he shot at his old private school in Houston. And who was the star of Rushmore? Well, truthfully, an unknown 17-year-old named Jason Schwartzman. I'm sorry, did someone say my name? The movie also revitalized the career of a comedy legend. Bill Murray was back for Anderson's The Royal Tenenbaums and became a part of Wes's extended family of players, along with Angelica Houston, the Wilson brothers, and Kumar Palana. Kumar, by the way, very funny guy, Pagoda. Kumar is a former yoga instructor who's appeared in all but one of Wes Anderson's movies. Kumar, are you ready? Let's get lucky. And that one Kumar free movie? Well, that would be the $50 million shark battling epic, The Life Aquatic, with Steve Zissou. Anderson's got a new movie. It's called The Darjeeling Limited, and it's the story of three brothers trying to reconnect and go visit their moms. The actors, Owen Wilson, Adrian Brody, and Jason Schwartzman. This was Jason's first film with Wes in almost a decade. You don't love me! Yes, I do! I love you too, but I'm gonna mace you in the uh face! Ladies and gentlemen, please be nice to Mr. Wes Anderson. Nice to see you. Thank you very much. Thank Thank you. Appreciate it. The, um, about 15 years, about five movies, that's a pretty good pace, right? Uh, it's slow, but, yeah. that's, but that's my pace. Yeah. And I, I would imagine that's something you have to make by choice because it's a, you know, iron strike while it's hot, right? Yeah, I, well, you know, it takes a long time for me to make a script. Um, this movie, this new movie, Darjeeling Limited, um, we spent yeah, almost two years writing the script. Jason Schwartzman, Roman Coppola, and I. Um, and um, but it was, you know, we weren't in a hurry. Mm -hmm. uh, we went to India together to write it, and um, we kind of made an adventure out of it. Um, and yeah, we had a, we had a good time doing that. Now you also made it difficult for yourself in a sense. You, how many days did you shoot on an actual train? Um, I mean, we shot for a month, I guess, on a train. Um, you know, I didn't want to take everybody to India and then go work on a sound stage. I wanted to, if we're going to be in India, let's see it. And, um, and since the, the first third of the movie is, uh, is on a train in a little compartment, um, I thought, well, let's make that compartment on a real train and every day we'll go out in, into the desert and, you know, re really s s see India. It's one of those things where if you miss your call in the morning, the set's gone. That could happen. That could happen. <laughs> <laughs> just, you can't be late. No. I mean, what, I mean you, you're three very different personalities on that train, man. I mean, I'm not counting yourself, the fourth, but you know, you've, got, you've, you've got Owen who's got his story. You've got, you've got Adrian who has had a hell of a run the last few years. And, of course, yeah. Jason who's kind of a legend in his stories. And, and you and him and Rushmore, perfect combination. How do you balance three guys like that in a film? Um, well, you know, I think the thing with that one was um, we, um, I, I had organized it where we would all live in a house together. And uh, they didn't have trailers. Uh, they didn't. There was no makeup department on the set. There were, it was. It was just. It was like a student film. Mm -hmm. So they were together all the time. We were all together all the time. They got to know each other. Jason and Owen already knew each other because Jason and I have known each other ten years, and Owen and I have known each other twenty years, and we've all been around each other. Mm -hmm. But Adrian was new, and he really joined in, and, and they became like brothers. Did you have any hesitation of, as you work with? You have a this comfort zone of actors who who really understand your kind of films, but. Did you hesitate at all bringing a new guy in, like Brody? No, I mean, I always bring some new people in. I want to expand my group of people. I, I like to work with my friends. Um, and I think that, you know, that in a way that if, if the people who are working on the movie are friends, it can go in, it, it can be, it can kind of, you can feel it on screen, I think, to some degree. But um, I also want to have new people and kind of expand that group. And Adrian's somebody who I've admired for years and years. Um, so I didn't have any hesitation about that. We wrote it for him. Oh, there you go. I don't want to ask you about Owen because I, until I get to ask Owen first, but because yeah. I, I would think it wouldn't be fair for you because if my friend went through that, I would. But at the same time, I was watching the film and there was this moment where Owen's character talks about how he tried to kill himself in this movie. And I watched it and went, 
oh, well, there's your life and art moment. Yeah. And I, I thought, for you as a friend, what a what a really interesting position, tragic position for you to, to experience. Yeah, well, it's, you know, I mean, it's, it's too complicated to even try to even begin to talk about, but um, I think it is the thing. He's gonna, he, he, he'll speak for himself much better than anybody else will, and he's doing very well, and he was great in the movie, and we had a great time together. He came to the premiere? Yes, yep. yeah, yeah, last week. So you talked to him, he's okay? Well? Oh, yeah, I know, okay. I see, I've seen okay. him all the time, I talked to him all the time. Oh, there you go. I, and he's so very you, good. You, you try to expand your, 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 the actors you work with, you've worked you know, wonderful with the Wilsons and, and, uh, and, and with Jason. Is there somebody who you're trying to get who won't do one of your films? Uh, it happens all the time. Yeah. I mean, I, 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 um, I've written parts for people that, and they wouldn't do them. Um, and, um, you know, the, the Royal Tenenbaums, a, a couple of movies ago, um, I, I wrote a part for Gene Hackman. And I couldn't get it. I spent two years convincing him to do it. And finally, I just kind of, I don't even know how I got him. He just finally broke down and said yes. Uh, and there he was. And he was angry. And I think he got robbed at the Oscars, you know, when he yeah, didn't he get was, that Oscar. He did a great job. It, do, you, do you pick the kind of actors I can teach you about how to direct? Because your movies feel like your movies, as I said off the top. And I wonder, that, there's a danger in that as well. You know, you don't want to be where your head's too far up your own ass that you can't expand your own vision. Right. The, um, uh, you know, I think uh, working with somebody like Gene, you learn all kinds of things all the time. Um, and yeah, definitely. Every, every, that's one of the things about, you know, it, you, we're, it, working with friends, it gives you a real comfort zone, but sometimes you, you want to make sure you don't get too comfortable. Um, so that's why, you know, and, and, and somebody like Gene Hackman, you've got to adapt to him. You've got to pay attention and, and, and adjust and, you know, and listen. Did the reaction to the Life Aquatic movie, is that, like, because you didn't need to make a film that felt like a student film. Um, and lots of guys spend most of their careers doing those films so that they don't have to. Um, and Life Aquatic, a lot of people liked it, but it didn't achieve what people thought it would. Is that a reason why you decided to make a film like this? Well, in, a little bit, because Life Aquatic, it cost much more money than I wanted it to, much more money than we were meant to. We weren't, we weren't really allowed to spend the amount of money we spent. Um, we just and did anyway, right? We just did anyway, yeah. Um, <laughs> and, um, and it took a long time. We shot for 100 days, and it was just giant. Um, and um, and I didn't want. I don't really want to work that way. I I, I, I not that I don't mind. I, I mean, I with that movie, I wanted to work on a kind of a large canvas, and we had, you know, ships and giant sets, and you know. And Jeff Goldblum. And Jeff Goldblum. Yeah. Um, but um, but this movie, what we wanted was to work quickly and keep it very and keep a more modest budget. At the same time, we went to India and we had our own train, and uh, you know, it, it had it had its own scale. But, but we shot it much more quickly. Okay, stick around. We're going to be joined by somebody in just a second with Wes. I want to tell you, uh, back when I was working at Much Music, a friend of mine came and he said, you got to go see this band. I saw this band play, and the drummer, I swear to God, he's the next Keith Moon. And Keith Moon from The Who, and I thought, don't ever say that, because no one's the next Keith Moon. And he said, watch this kid. It's some guy named Jason Schwartzman. He's the next Keith Moon, and he'll join us when the hour returns. <laughs> Back here on the air, Wes Anderson joined by Jason Schwartzman, who's worked with him several times over the years, and of course in this new film as well. Welcome to the show, man. Thank you for having me, sir. I appreciate it. How are things? It. What's going on? Great. I'm happy to be here right now. This is totally wild. Well, how do you find time to act? What with all the music you make? Well, I, I I'm always making music. Um, whenever you know, I I try to you know always be recording something on my computer, even if it's just a little idea or something. Um, that's the great thing about music, especially these days, you can always find um, a place and, and time to do it. So it's really, that's, I'm always writing or trying to write something. It's being creative is just being creative. Is that the same thing? Well, I'm not, I mean, it's, it's not easy for me to like write music. So I, to, I just try to keep doing it, like just plot away at it. It's not like some people just can write songs very quickly. For me, it takes a long time. So I'm just always trying to chip away at stuff. If you go to myspace.com slash coconut records, you can hear some of the new stuff that, that yeah. he's got on there. You can buy it on iTunes uh, website as well. Just type in coconut records or on my, I started my own record label to put out my record. It's called Young Baby Records. Mm -hmm. And if you buy it, I, I send, I'll send, i send you a CD and you'll also get um, a young baby. Young baby, you get a young baby. No, you get a, a Polaroid that I've taken, so you have something personal. Nice. Yeah, <laughs> that's, really that's pretty cool, man. Yeah. Um, oh. <laughs> it, about, about a decade. <laughs> that's funny. About a decade between uh, working on films together. Yep. Yeah. Was that long? Yeah, it was yeah. something like that. What uh, <laughs> is it? The kind of thing that it just. You woke up one day and went, God, it's been like 10 years since I worked with Wes, or was it one of those things where you guys constantly planned on trying to do something? 
I wasn't really aware of it that that had been that long. Yeah, I mean, you know, we we, we 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 saw each other so much in between. Yeah, I mean, we are like best friends, yeah. so it it I don't feel like we we both worked on Rushmore together, and then I never saw him again for ten years until this project came about. We've always been uh, in each other's lives, and um, that's probably why it didn't feel like ten years. Because time flies when you're having fun. But you, I mean, but you're, you're like him in the sense. If you look at your at your list of films that you've done, you don't overdo it as well. Do you make a conscious effort not to work on too many projects? Um, yeah, I just you know I I, I, I try to find pieces uh, movies that I that I respond to just on a gut reaction. Uh, I, I can read it and kind of tell early on if this is something that I that I could do it and I mean and, and sometimes it works out where you, you read it and, and then you meet or audition with the director and they agree that you should be in it and sometimes you love it and you say I want to be a part of this and it, it doesn't work out so there's just different reasons over the years why I've done the movies I've done and, and I haven't done the movies I, I haven't done. When you direct a film uh, on a script that you've written with somebody else and that somebody else is in the film. Yeah, him. Um, it's only happened once. Is it, what's that like directing him? Because he knows the character too. That's uh, funny because, you know, we spent, you know, a couple of years working, working on the script and we made a short film, which he's in, where he yeah. plays the same character. Which we can't see in Canada, by we're, the way. We're going to get that for you, though. We're going to get that. We're going to put it online here. We're going to add it to the prints in the theaters Good. here. We're going to solve that problem. That's a promise yeah. from us <laughs> to you. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. Yes. <laughs> so so he, you you worked on this for a couple for a couple of years. Uh, yes. Yeah, so we worked on it for a couple of years, and then um, and then when it came time to actually shoot the movie, we went to India. We're getting ready to shoot the movie. He suddenly uh, came to my room, knocking on the door late at night, a couple of days before we started shooting, and said, "I don't know who this guy is. I don't understand this character." And uh, I was like, well, "How how is that possible?" Okay, that sounds like a, that sounds like a crazy Hollywood moment. Were you sober? What what happened there? No, it's just I. You know, like Wes said, we've been writing this character for two years, but. I had uh, and the movie for two years, but I had been so focused on the writing of it and and the three of us together as collaborators trying to figure out the story that approaching it um, to act it and to memorize the lines and say them, I was I was off guard and I and I flipped out a little bit. I was very scared. I didn't know who the guy was. He was a mystery to me, and like Wes said, he said, "Yo, you know, you know him." And then slowly but surely, things came back. And I think that really it was the writing process that became everything that I used to uh, base the character on all the... All Are you a things. confident actor? What does that mean? Do you walk... <laughs> do you believe in your ability to pull it off? Well, this is a very interesting question and uh, something that I, I've thought about a lot. For instance, there are some actors that are very confident and they go, give me the, throw me the ball, coach. You know, put me in. Yeah. And, you know, I was thinking about this like with a surgeon, like a heart surgeon, the la you want to say to the heart surgeon, can you do this surgery? And you want them to say, yes, I can do it. You don't want them to be like, well, I'll do the best I can. And yeah. I'll, you know, so, um, I don't really know this yeah. character, but I'm, yeah. But I think like, and this is just from the bottom of my heart, um, because I'm always learning and I'm always trying to work with people that I can learn from. Like Wes said, you always can learn. Mm -hmm. and, and the thing is that, um, I um, try, I mean, before every, I go into every job, I'm very nervous, and that fear um, is just that I won't be prepared. I just always want to be the most prepared I can be and not make a mistake. Mm -hmm. And so I, I overly work just to make sure I'm, I'm all right. And then the thing is that you can work, 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 and then you just have to go in there and eventually just do it. And it is kind of like a feet don't fail me now thing, but I wouldn't say that I'm a very confident actor, I just like, at a certain point, I have no choice but to just, con being um, confident or not confident is not going to help. You just have to say the lines and, and be funny. Do them. Or be serious. Or be serious. Yeah. <laughs> either, either way, you just got to do your best. You can't, it's, it's, it's useless to, to stress too much. Do you need this movie to, uh, I know you guys are, you're not the typical, you, you don't run a studio, but do you need this movie to make a certain amount of money to feel like you, you did your job? Uh, no. No, no, not, not to feel like we did our job, to feel great. <laughs> but, um, 
but I think, um, <laughs> you know, but I feel like our job was to just go, to, yeah. you know, we wanted to make a very personal movie and we wanted to make a, something that, that, that was about family and a certain kind of dynamic that we were familiar with and we wanted to make a movie that expressed how we feel about India and what we've learned about India. Yeah. Um, and I think we did, you know, we did those things. So I, I feel good. And I mean, and this movie. is just, well, I, we've talked about this because Wes and I are traveling around um, here and around America and we've been showing the film and talking with people about it. And um, I must say, every night, people turn up to these uh, to the screenings that we do, and we get to talk to the people who come out and they ask us questions. And it just, I don't mean this to sound cheesy, so if you're lactose intolerant, you might want to <laughs> take something for that, because this will be cheesy. But um, it means the world when someone says, like, thank you so much, this, I love this movie. I love the, I, I really related to it. Like, conversely, if somebody says to you, I didn't like it. What do you say? What does it mean to you? I just walk away. <laughs> <laughs> but, but do you, I mean, you know, some, like, I interviewed a musician once who said he gets on stage and he requires the love and adoration of 20,000 people to feel like he did it. Do you need sure. people to like this? Well, Wes is going to answer that question. No, no, no I, was, I, I, I was just taking a breath. Well, I was going to say that <laughs> each person comes to the film with their own set of, of things that have happened in their lives and they bring their own histories and, and, and personal stories to watching a movie. So mm -hmm. you can be showing one movie, but everybody can be having a different reaction to it and all their reactions are right. Darjeeling so if they don't like it, that's their reaction, that's okay. Thanks for coming, guys, good to see Thanks you. Thanks so much. Wes Anderson, Jason Stratton, nice to see you. So we Darjeeling, it's in theaters now, we'll be right back. All right, Mark